Roadmap for SAP S4 HANA Cloud. Join me at SAP TechEd, where strategy talks, customer sessions, co-innovation jams and roadmap will be available at your fingertips. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Menina and I welcome you or welcome you back if you've just stayed with us from the previous hour. And I'm really much excited to um, introduce you to the upcoming hour together with my co-host Max. Um, we'll be starting with fresh new content here in Channel 1 at SAP Tech at 2020. But before we get into that, have a look into the behind the scenes of what happened until now. Here I am, I'm standing on probably the most sophisticated and unbelievable stage I've ever stood on in my life. The way this is done can be described as virtual production. That's kind of a newer term and a newer production technology that has, been, uh, has become popular uh, since The Mandalorian. This is something that I've never experienced before, I've never really seen before. I've always worked with um, a green screen and this LED technology that we're using for this year's tech ed is completely different. The basic of this studio um, is not only the really big LED screen and um, the LED floor, the basic are the track cameras. We have two cameras on pedestals and we have a camera crane and all these two cameras are tracked. That means um, the computer gets information where exactly the camera moves and the computer tells the real-time 3D engine where it's placed in that moment. So that means the whole virtual set and its completely perspective moves around all the time where the camera is being moved. I mean, I've been in environments where there's lighting and, you know, they, they put the lights on you and they, they move this around or there's a stage where they physically bring out all the props and everything like that, but to be Honestly, inside of a video game, it's just amazingly cool. A live show with 48 hours, with this technology, with three cameras, and that level of production hasn't been achieved or been produced in Europe so far. We bring the customer needs together with, um, of course, the, the community needs, but also with all the other great partners we have um, in this whole production. One of the main differences I think that virtual tech ed has with a regular physical event is the amount of people that we're going to be able to reach. Here we're talking about 50, 60, 100,000 people that will be able to look at the content, they'll be able to understand what SAP has to offer, and they'll even be able to get hands-on experience. And also, because you can watch the sessions afterwards, I really hope that we continue to engage with the community with regard to the tech ed sessions all through that, um, all throughout the next year. Hey, and welcome back from the kitchen. That was a behind the scenes, and now here we are, right, Max? Um, I'm super excited about this topic now because we have everything that you need to upskill you. So it's about learning, it's about developing new skill sets, everything that makes you more successful in your role, in your career to grow. Um, 
everywhere where you can say, oh, I haven't known that, but it's something new I want to learn. Um, so the upcoming sessions that we have are um, from community members at SAP Community. What we did was we asked the community um, about ideas, thoughts, uh, projects that they were doing to share their personal experiences um, with SAP Tech at 2020. And so here we are with uh, really um, diverse community talks spread throughout the SAP Tech at 2020 um, channel, one ag agenda. Um, and right now we have two coming up, so um, very diverse ones. And the first one will be um, interviewed by Max directly. So Max, I'd like to hand it over to you and give more insights of what's coming up now. All right. So I'm very honored to be joined by a friend of mine. I got to know like two or three years ago. We met each other in person the first time last year at SAP Tacket in India. The man I'm talking about is Namit Napit Madan, delivery lead at Mobilitas Consulting. He's inspirational. He doesn't fear trying out new stuff. I know that a lot of folks are looking up to him, not only in India. He has been initiator of lots of SAP inside tracks and SAP stammtisches in India. The bio of him is as crisp as short, a technology enthusiast always looking to learn and share. Let's welcome Napit and talk to him about transitioning from an ABAP developer, ABAP programmer to developer. Welcome, Navid. I hope you're doing fine. So great to see you. Hi, Max. Hi, Aina. Hi. Yeah, I'm doing fine. How are you? <laughs> we are doing excellent in this Tech it House. How could it be otherwise? I mean, it's so great to see you guys joining us in this Tech it House. And my very first question is actually a soft one. How is your arm doing so far, Navid? I've seen it somewhere on Twitter that you're doing Tech it Fun Run and Walk but a little bit is still going strong. <laughs> it's just doing fine. The, I think I'll be up and running in another week or so. Yeah. Good to hear, good to hear. Um, I'd like to start with a question about what do you actually mean with from transitioning from an other programmer to a developer? I mean, on both sides are somehow code involved, but what does it mean? I think uh, when I say ABAP developer, I'm particularly concerned about one skill, right? Which is ABAP and its related stuff. But when I say developer, for me, programming language is just an art, you know? I'm being the painter and I can paint it with any color. So these colors are programming languages, different concept technologies. So it is that transition where you actually embrace what different things exist in the uh, technology stack, right? So that's what I mean. So from just ABAP, to maybe Fury, SAP Cloud, Kubernetes, containers. The world is yours. You can talk about anything. So you are just a developer who can do anything. OK, sounds good. When has this journey somehow started for you, and why? <laughs> journey, I think uh, it is still ongoing. But if you ask me when it started, it started around seven, eight years back when uh, uh, there was a blog post from our SAP mentor, Graham Robinson, about a call to arms for BAP developers. So it had some seeds regarding what is coming next and what is, you know, a move from procedural to object rendered. So that's what it triggered it, right? But actually, the move happened when I actually got, uh, we got SAP UI5, right? And I was like, okay, just like any other BAP programming language, you know, we, if we want to learn WebDIN Pro or something, we can do it, right? I was like, okay, I will also do SAP UI5. So, but then the moment you started, then you realize that no, no, I don't know it, right? And then in parallel, I was getting active in the community also. So while becoming active, and once you follow right people, for example, DJ Adams, Thomas Zhang, so there were too many jargons being thrown, like for example, Fury, Cloud Platform, and I was like, boss, all I know is about, I don't know anything else. So for me, this was like a blessing in disguise or whatever you call it that actually pushed me that I have to make this move now or never, right? So that's what actually I started slowly, steadily taking some baby steps. Probably stepping a little back, usually as an other programmer is you're like dealing with SEAT day in, day out. 
How did it feel to walk out of this like comfort zone somehow? It's tough. It's tough. But but I think two things definitely matters. One is uh, three, in fact, not two. One is your willingness to change because that is the first thing, willingness to learn, right? The second is, uh, as I mentioned, once you start following the community, right, it, it motivates you. It motivates you to take those steps which you would not have taken. And then, of course, people like you, TJ Adams and all who actually, you know, actually your live stream helped me a lot. So basically that's where I was like, okay, this journey is not that tough how it looks, right? Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's a different world, but it's, it's, it's nice, I will say that. I'm actually, you know, it's a kind of enlightenment. <laughs> you feel blessed and blissed, right? So it's both. <laughs> I got your point. If I'm able to do it, everybody's able to do that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, well, you just scratched a lot of things or touched a lot of things from SAP UR5, from uh, SAP Cloud Platform. How did you identify what's needed for you or what you're interested in? <laughs> Actually, uh, Max, that, that's the perfect question, I'll say, because the moment you start that, okay, I want to change, now you are like, okay, what shall I do? Because there are too many things. There is like Kubernetes, containers, SAP Cloud Platform, and then you have Kima, Garden, the, a number of things and, and sadly most of the time you step back and say I'm fine with the BAP, I'll 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 survive with it somehow. But I think what worked for me was I wanted to understand at a very you know higher level that what each thing, what role each thing plays in this whole technology ecosystem. For example, if we talk about cloud platform, okay, what role does it have, right? If we talk about containers, what role does it have? So I spend good amount of time in understanding it, right? And then whatever interested me, for example, Fury, uh, SAP Cloud Platform, Cloud Foundry, or uh, what do we say this, uh, containers. Then I realized I, I actually started liking them. And that's where I decided, okay, I need to go in this direction. But there is a, there is a catch. Catch is these directions keep on changing, right? So for example, a few months back, not months, I think five, six weeks back, I was like, I want to learn now AIML, right? And I was like, no, no, I have to do it. I have to do it. But after three weeks, it was like, no, no, man, I will still stick to my old one. So it's like, you keep evolving, keep learning. It's like very important to understand you don't have to stop learning. It will never stop. If you're a developer, you're a developer, as DJ Adam puts it, learner for the whole life. So that's what something which we shall always have in back of our mind. I think we already had the, the a first perfect quote for tech, it never stop learning. Um, <laughs> What I actually wanted to know how, in a sense of what approach do we have to learn? Do you read blog posts? Do you, I was about to say blog, but DJ would, would hammer me on that. Um, do you read blog posts? Do you read documentation? Do you get your hands dirty first? Or what's your, your take on how to learn something? I think, I think for me, let me, okay. For me, it started with, I don't know if you remember that DJ started with Monday morning thoughts. It was previous year or two prior to that. So those Monday morning thoughts and 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 the other stuff which is happening, they trigger your mind, right? So so if I have to learn something, I start from a post, right? It'll be a most probably blog post on our SAP community, or it can be our SAP developer tutorials, right? Or it can be our SAP developer live streams. So that will be my first approach to understand quickly what one thing is, right? And in parallel, I start doing it because. If I'm just watching a video or if I'm just reading a blog post or if I'm just reading something, it will not make sense to me unless I start doing things and I get stuck, then I resolve it, then I move forward, right? So that's how I get the first level of understanding that, okay, at least in theory, I understand what this technology is and what role this play. The next level which it comes as uh, is when actually you start working on the project. So that's where you actually go to documentation and think through, because now you have a basic understanding. You will now understand that, okay, this is how this documentation, what it is saying, what it means. So it's like, it's a two-step process for me. And of course, apart from SAP, we have, uh, there are other resources also which help me. For example, we have a free code camp, right? We have DevDo2 and other YouTube live streams, right? So that's how, it's a combination of both, but 
it's, it's as you say it's more of a practical learning than of a, you know first reading the whole book and then starting it that's bit uh, you know i i think if if i'll read a whole book actually i'll end up forgetting everything so it's better you learn on the go start doing things and then you once the project demands whatever it demands then you start digging more deep into it so i think that has worked for me till now yeah all right uh, let's put aside the YouTube live streaming for a bit. I'll come back to that in a second. But um, we've covered a lot of things with documentation, with blog posts, tutorials, videos. What's your preferred format about learning? I think it is, uh, for me, it is SAP Developer YouTube channel. That is, let, let's order it, right? I like videos more, right? And then I go to blog post, which is like a, kind of an experience, which is coming, right? And uh, uh, then I think I will have go to developer dot tutorials. Those tutorials, those I might also start at the beginning also. But preferably, it is more of a live video streamings and all, which actually help me because uh, what I do is I normally pause and uh, then try to do it. And I remember once I, you know, when DJ started hands on SAP Dev, uh, his first session was about Node, and I was like, I attended it. Right, and it was a 40 minutes or 60 minutes, what some session, right? And uh, it took me one week to, you know, understand what has been discussed, what has been shown. I used to pause and then do stuff, then read, then do stuff. So it's, it's like a mix of both, but yeah, it's more of a I'm a video oriented guy, you can say that. All right, a streaming guy. Yeah. Sounds good. Speaking of what you've learned when, when, yeah, this whole live streaming came up in the SAP atmosphere, what was the last thing you've learned? <laughs> That's like, uh, I think last thing which I learned, I'll say this uh, overall, I think much of the learning is from uh, 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 these live streams. The last thing I participated on was Dev DevTuber Fest, where I purposely was following the cloud platform workflow, right? That to Node.js based, not the uh, this, the cap. First I started with cap, Node.js one, and then cloud platform workflow. And these are the two things I think I learned lastly. Yeah. And there is still to be much to be done. There are many things to be done in DevTuber first, which I haven't still now. And now SAP Tech content is also piling up. <laughs> so there is too much content, content overdose. Uh, speaking of Tacket, do you have a favorite session or a favorite content track you're looking at? Also, I mean, you're talking about moving away from, or not moving away, but broadening your skills from other programmer to something else. Is there a particular content track you're looking forward? I am actually, you know, in the morning when this, the developer keynote happens. So those were like, I think those were the kind of, that's what I was like, you know, when I, when you say, oh, wow, this is the moment. So, so that's when you say different technologies, including a BAP coming up and, you know, making something beautiful. And apart from it, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm these, you know, I'm looking forward to data intelligence sessions by Vitali, right? So I attended, in fact, in the morning, early morning, it was about creating data pipelines. That was, I liked it. And then uh, I think I'm, I'm looking forward to chatbots and uh, more on an RPA area. Of course, if you ask me, where is SAP F5? Yeah, that, that's like a, by default, that will be there somewhere, but these are the something new, which I am trying to, get my head around that, okay, how do I approach it? Yeah. All right. We've been talking about live streaming for quite some time already. And I know we both do live streams. I stopped quite some time ago because I was a little occupied, obviously, with Tacket. And I know that you are like uh, absolutely going crazy and uh, uh, viral in India, not only in India, I always talk about India, but that's complete uh, nonsense. You're everywhere. And um, I'd like to look a little bit behind the scenes, why do we live stream? Wow. <laughs> so uh, I think Max, uh, see, I think at least for me, the many of my steps have taken inspiration from DJ Adams. I, I don't know why I keep iterating it, but that's what has actually, you know, impressed or has a huge imprint on my uh, last few years. So. So we started with hands-on SAP Dev, and then eventually we have many with the live streams going on, right? And um, uh, somewhere I felt that I have this see this scope that where uh, there's a there is a, something which I can do for, do for beginners, right? 
the somebody, for example, somebody who is coming from an ABAP background to a SAP UI5, he needs to understand JavaScript, HTML, CSS, right? Those basic things. And uh, I can help them there, right? It's too basic stuff, right? But it is still okay. But what brings me the benefit is that while teaching, right? While it's not teaching, it's like interacting with the community, I actually end up learning many things. You know, for example, if I have to talk about any topic, I need to prepare myself, right? And um, those methods, those functional programming, JavaScript, maps, method, different methods, which were difficult to me, but they become easy once I was practicing it because I have to teach it to somebody. I have to tell them that this is how things work. So the first most important benefit which it had for me was it enhanced my knowledge. Secondly, it, it helped my community also, right? And community also comes back with very complex questions <laughs> to which you have to go back and research. So it's, it's a win-win for everyone, right? So I think, and, 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 and last but not the least, there is a sense of satisfaction, right? Because I, there is one, one close friend of mine whose father used to say, you know, you have taken so much from the community, when will you start giving back? So it's one way of, you know, it's, it's one way of completing that vicious circle. You are what you are because of the community and you will become what because of the community only. So this, this to and fro kind of a thing and a satisfaction. Yeah, that's what. To get a little bit more in detail, I mean, we are kind of digressing from the original topic, but it makes sense to cover it because it's important yeah, absolutely. In in order to tell folks out there how you did upskilling and to like uh, um, tell other folks out there how they should approach uh, learning. Um, uh, yeah, come on. Yeah. So for me, it was like uh, actually the the good thing which happened to me was I started following right people and was at least staying close to the community. So there were jargons. I call them as jargons for different things which start coming up and. Uh, and I was like, wow, for, for, a web, for a, somebody who is developing web in publication module pool, these all things were tough, right? So that's where I put all these buckets that, okay, these, these are the jargons, right? Okay, if in, I have to learn SAP UI 5, I'll have to understand JavaScript. So I'll understand those, uh, those, all these four, three, four topics at a very higher level, right? And then which will make sense to me, I'll go deep in that. And Particularly, what helped me in upskilling was one, a willingness to learn. Second, the, the 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 mentors around which we have, right? Our mentors, they always are willing to help you out, even if you have a basic question, whatever, right? And of course, our SAP community. This and in fact, uh, I remember uh, these. I started with developer tutorials also, doing like every week one developer tutorial mission or something like that, and which actually helped me in you know upskilling at a very higher pace so it's important i think is a willingness to learn if there is a will there will be a way yeah all right um <laughs> while i was thinking about it and we have discussions back and forth on an offline and twitter or wherever it is or in at uh, tech it in india what's your absolute favorite uh, favorite program language <laughs> oh man, that that's, uh, I think if you would have asked me five, six years back, it would have been ABAP and still ABAP is, uh, but off late, uh, I think I've, I've become fan of JavaScript, not Java. That was I'm wrong sorry, answer. but that was the wrong I'm, I'm a JavaScript fan. <laughs> yeah, um, because yeah, you've covered that ABAP isn't like not in your scope anymore, but what is the benefit of, of ABAP still? Because ABAP is gone. ABAP in the cloud, etc. Yes, ABAP is there. ABAP, ABAP is not gone. ABAP is evolving. It, in fact, if you see the recent changes which have happened in ABAP, I think they are in line with what any modern language is, right? And I was very much impressed with all the latest construct which have happened, the way it has evolved. It is not going anywhere. I think my first love, which will always remain, is ABAP only. And and I think for everyone, it is important is to understand that ABAP is, a, is, is, is like the root of the whole tree from which this whole world of SAP is created for me, right? So ABAP is a must have. It's like the basic necessity to be there. Then you go around around open source or cloud or other stuff, but you need to understand ABAP. So that's what uh, my, my understanding is. Okay. We've covered something before, but I, I wanted to throw in another question as you've been uh, speaking about uh, 
chatbots, etc. But um, is there any? I mean, this, this session is all about developers. Is there any particular program language you have on your list? I think uh, Go and Python is in my list to learn. And uh, uh, overall, uh, I, I got inspired by one of our uh, SAP X mentor, uh, Alvarado, right? Is He has done 40 programming languages. And I, I discussed with him what, what exactly is the benefits. Like every programming language teaches you something new. Right. So, so as of now, I think I'm, I'm more willing to learn the, these two, which will be like, we saw one in action today and Python was in action in our data pipeline session with the Vitaly, right? So, so these all are, I think, are relevant languages. And, but if Max, you want me to say Java, then <laughs> I am sorry, man. <laughs> this session is going nowhere without Java. No, I'm kidding. I'm just making it up. I'm absolutely <laughs> in favor for Java, but nobody, nobody's forced to love Java. Um, we are almost at the end. I'd like to uh, at least wrap it up from your side. Um, is there like anything you want to mention for the community out there? What's important, what they need to know if they want to upskill? I think I'll have two, three, four points. I'll just me quickly wrap it up. One is be willing and be open to learn, right? Embrace the change, don't resist it. It is, you know, the moment you start embracing things, you start moving forward. Be active in the community. Doesn't matter if you don't know the answer, at least read it, right? Like it, right? You share it. And fourthly, I think is follow right people on Twitter. When I say right is for me, right is anybody who is close to technology, who inspire me, who, who motivates me. So you can follow those. And I think these four things, if you have, I think the world is yours, the sky is yours. There's, there's no limit. So that's what all I have to say, Max. All right. Um, with that, uh, <laughs> I hope you have a quick recovery with your arm. Uh, and I'm curious about, uh, do you plan any further contribution to the Tech It, Fun, Run and Walk? Yeah, walk, walk. Yes. Day three is tomorrow. So two days we have done. Day three is tomorrow. So yeah, yeah. Let's bring it on. This is, is the best thing. You walk and you listen to the... Uh, the sessions which are happening. That's what I did in the morning. I was listening to Vitaly's session in the morning and it was awesome. <laughs> so it's the benefit. Yeah, I'm in, man. <laughs> okay, all right. Nabit, thank you so much for taking time for being part of SAP Tech 2020. Take care and I wish you a quick recovery with your arm. Thanks, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Nabit, for coming on and for telling you about your story and inspiring others out there to learn more uh, and broaden your uh, skills besides ABAP. I just can relate to that. I mean, my journey was kind of kind of similar. Um, I don't want to chime in whenever he was talking. I just wanted mm -hmm. to say something about my history because um, I've been starting with VBA, uh, so um, developing in Microsoft Office products, moving over to uh, COBOL, a very, very old-fashioned language, as we had it in the developer keynote, to Java, to, again, from Java to ABAP, from ABAP to cloud-native stuff. And it's uh, really, really, really important to find people they can inspire you, and Nabit is absolutely one of them. He's also an SAP champion, right? Absolutely. What sure? are SAP champions, by the way? Oh. Uh, That's always yeah, your part. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay, missing out it. bridges. I thought you would be doing it, but it's okay. <laughs> Um, as you can see, what Nabid shared is that everyone can learn. Uh, you, you will never stop learning and sharing that uh, with the community, um, even by providing answers or writing blog posts definitely helps you to um, also uh, grow on yourself, like as an expert. As he said, um, there might be other questions coming up and you're like, okay, I need to deep into that topic again. but but it's what makes you stronger and makes you also more confident in the, in the topic that you know. So for everyone, whether you're a beginner or an, an expert, um, it's definitely uh, great to have the community with you. And as an SAP champion, what they do, they, they are 
they are highly contributors. So uh, it's one of our influencer programs uh, together with the SAP mentors and the SAP champions. They, they are there for yeah, helping you, um, everyone in the community, whenever you need it. So really great to have heard from Nabit here. Hearing from Nabit. Why don't we have a look at Nabit's community profile, for example? Sure, that that's makes it definitely a bit more clearer. If, we, if there are folks out there that don't know uh, the SAP community, we have community.sap.com, where all um, influencers are listed. Um, amongst them is Nabit and a lot of others. Uh, we have a SAP champions wall, where you will see some of them in the background in some of our occasions here in Channel 1. Absolutely. I mean, I already went to the, the, to the homepage yeah. of SAP community. And what you could simply do if you're looking, for example, for Napid, I'm brave enough to damn it once again. I already failed at the developer keynote, but never stop <laughs> trying out stuff. So I'm just looking for his name in the SAP community and hit enter. And we should have the possibility to fill the not only for Q&A, they will definitely see Napid is actively contributing to questions, blog posts, etc. But if I want to see his profile, I filter for people on the right hand side, click on his profile, and I will directly get forwarded to all the information you need to know about Napit. For example, his YouTube live stream we just talked about. Make sure you follow him. I do already follow him. I will not click on unfollow here because that's not what we want folks out there to the do. Good, the good thing is, is that every SAP tech at attendee uh, can log in directly and get connected with all the influencers, with everyone that, they, that you just heard, or um, also browse through the topics um, available. So I think it's definitely worth uh, checking it out and having a look. What I've just forgotten, because we've been speaking about inspiring people, it's not only Napit, there is a whole section in the SAP community where we can find SAP champions, you have been talking about yeah. SAP mentors, and I'd like to have a look at that as well in a second, if you approve. Yeah, yeah. it's great that you showcased how to search for people and content. So that's, that's definitely the place how to go. Uh, it's a program, it's one of our SAP community programs. So all you need to do is going from the homepage to the um, programs, and from there you will find all the influencers listed. In all influencers, right? Correct. And we'll take a second and as you can see, there's SAP champions where Napid is a part of it. We have SAP mentors. We have seen them, for example, in the executive keynotes. Um, we have developer advocates uh, where I'm a part of. <laughs> and I think it's already at the end of a demo because my battery is running yeah. out of time. And we also need to go to our next topic. Uh, we're still in the topic of upscaling. And uh, what's interesting here is that we are swift switching from um, the te technical <laughs> skills that we think you should be upskilled about to the soft skills. The keyword here is emotional intelligence and uh, to hear how that is important, um, we will hear from leadership facilitator Dominic Lai, uh, who is also part of the community and will be joining us in a moment um, for a community talk interview that is called Set Talent into Motion with Emotion. And with that, I would like to welcome Dominic uh, into our kitchen. <laughs> Hi, Dominic. Welcome to Hello. SAP Tech at Channel One. It's good to have you. Hi, Menina. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. Good to see you. Yeah, same here. Um, do you want to quickly share with the audience where you're from and what's your experience with the SAP community? How long have you yes, been Yes, of with course. Um, well, I'm from Germany originally, but I'm living in the beautiful city of Barcelona uh, for quite a long time already, six years. And I belong to the SAP community since 2007. And talking about the community, I've actually been there as a speaker of the community uh, tech uh, talk track in the SAP tech at 2019 in Barcelona, where when it was still possible to do this kind of events in person. Really nice. Um, the title of your of our community talk interview is "Set Talent into Motion with Emotion." Now, how or why are um, emotions important uh, in regards to upskilling developers? 
Yeah, I have to admit, uh, Mina, Mina, that it sounds a little bit odd at the first moment, right? Because when we talk about the skills of a developer, we are referring commonly to skills such as knowing different languages, computing platforms, tools. And it's without a doubt, it's very necessary and important to master all these skills. But at the same time, there are some other skills, some less obvious skills that are also important. And these less obvious skills can leverage the before mentioned skills so that we can boost the de developer's performance and get even more out of it. So the skills that I'm referring to are the emotional intelligence skills. And emotional intelligence goes beyond knowledge. It's about getting the best out of you and the people around you. And when you say get the best out of you and the people around you, um, it sounds like a double-sided approach. So do I get it right that uh, emotional intelligence not only benefits yourself, but also then directly others? Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, and somehow one leads to the other. Um, but let me explain it uh, step by step. On one side, we have the intrapersonal emotional intelligence skills and we have the interpersonal emotional intelligence skills. So the intrapersonal skills are about um, learning to, um, to make use of my attention and manage distractions. They are about um, managing better my, my impulsiveness and react in a way that I afterwards might not regret. And it's about getting to know my strengths and my weaknesses so that I can bring in the best version of me at any given, in any given situation. And it's also about getting to know my intrinsic motivators and my values so that I can align with them and find more fulfillment with what I'm doing. But this is probably not enough nowadays because building software has become very complex nowadays. Building software is a team sport now. So as with any team sport, it is very necessary to, um, to be very good at interaction, right? So this brings me to the second category of emotional intelligence skills, the interpersonal skills. The interpersonal skills are about connecting with others in a better way. They are about managing distress in others and also having difficult conversations. And um, so in other word, words, it's about being empathetic. It's about showing social skills and bringing positive impact into my surroundings. So this is something we cannot exclude actually from the skill toolkit of a developer. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me a bit more about the interper interpersonal skills? It seems that the skills uh, aims to improve uh, the way how you interact with others, correct? Yes, that's absolutely right. Um, and as you say, interaction is the key word here. Mm -hmm. If we want to attain a better interaction with others, we have to establish a better communication. And communication is not easy and has never been. But at the same time, we are constantly communicating with others, with our mm, co-workers, with the client. So it's very necessary to, to work on our skills to be a better skillful communicator. And through emotional intelligence, what we can do is cultivate the ability to listen deeply to others, getting clearer about our own intentions and needs that we bring into a conversation, monitor our emotions while we are in this conversation, and showing caring and understanding, and find ways to collaborate in a more compassionate way. So we can be very good developers, but if we are not good at interaction, with our co-workers, with a client, our work performance diminishes. So nobody wants it. So anything that we can do to be a more skillful communicator is welcome. And how do we do this? So we talked about adding uh, emotional intelligence skills to, to, your, to, your, yeah, to your skill set, to your, to your person or your, the way how you interact with others. How do I do this? Do I simply say, okay, from now on, I will, I will concentrate better. I want to be a team player or how, how, how do you recommend doing this? Yeah, it's interesting that you say that because it's exactly where sometimes difficulties arise, right? Because I may be able to say to myself, well, I want to be more empathetic right now, but then it comes to a serious situation, for instance, and things may become very triggering for me. 
So at that moment, I perhaps react in a way that I probably afterwards might regret. So I forget about all my good intention to be a better team player or to be more empathetic at that moment. So um, fortunately, there is another way to do that. And it's exactly about what you've just been saying. It's about a specific training that we can do. And this uh, specific training is based on the premise that emotional intelligence is actually trainable. And this training is not new to SAP. Um, on the contrary, it has been around since 2013 when Peter Bosterman, Chief Mindfulness Officer at SAP, first brought the Google developed leadership program Search Inside to Self to SAP. And uh, since then, already more than 10,000 people have gone through this program. Actually, I'm a Search Inside to Self instructor myself. And this program is based on the, on the, um, on contemporary uh, neuroscience. So contemporary neuroscience suggests that our brain is malleable, meaning that it changes, changes its structure and functions depending on where we direct its attention. So when we are able to train our attention and awareness, we are able to increase our emotional, emotional intelligence skills. So let me give you two examples that I think we can all relate to. For instance, if you want to be less distracted, well, train your attention in order to get more concentrated. Or if you want to be more empathetic, well, train the regions in your brain responsible for empathy. Sounds easy, right? Yeah, really easy. <laughs> Sounds easy. How do we do this now? Yeah, that is exactly the question. Uh, things that sound easy are not necessarily easy. So um, indeed, it takes some patience and dedication. And the practices in, um, that we use to train our attention and awareness is what we commonly refer to as mindfulness. So mindfulness in that way becomes the fundament of cultivating our emotional intelligence skills. And mindfulness can be trained in, in two ways. On one side, we can train mindfulness in a dedicated way. That would be sitting down on a cushion, let's say for 20 minutes or so, and train our attention. And it can all be, also be trained in an integrated way, meaning bringing this attention that we, that we have been cultivating before into a day-to-day -day situation, such as a conversation, you know, bringing fully the, uh, the full attention to the conversation. So my suggestion would be sit down on a cushion and it's like going to the gym and train the attention and then have the ability to bring this cultivated attention or this increased awareness into any day-to-day -day situation. So would you like to try out the formal practice of mindfulness, Menina? Menina and Max, yes. <laughs> yes, why not? Okay. <laughs> so let's go for it. So find a way to, to sit where you can be relaxed and alert at the same time. You might experiment by not leaning um, back on the chair and invite the back of your neck to lengthen. You might want to arc your back slightly, soften your shoulders. Notice your hands, notice your feet. And you can keep your eyes slightly open and with your gaze resting downwards. Or if you are comfortable to do so, you can also close your eyes. And now bringing the attention to your breath, taking a few deep breaths. Sometimes we constrict our breathing without being aware of it. So you might want to experiment by softening your shoulders, opening your chest. And where in the body can you feel the sensations of breath? It may be in the stomach as it rises and falls, or at the tip of your nostrils with cool air coming in and warmer air coming out. Wherever you can feel your breath most vividly, allow this point to be your anchor point, noticing the distraction and bringing the attention back to your anchor. Noticing the distraction and bringing the attention back to your anchor point. 
And it, if it helps you, you can say silently to yourself, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. And breathing out, I know I'm breathing out to help track your attention. Can you notice the moment your in-breath begins, how it continues and how it ends? And can you notice when your out-breath begins, how it continues and when it ends and another in-breath begins? With your attention, can you follow a full cycle of breath? Just try it out. And now as we move towards a close, try again to follow a complete cycle of breath with your gentle and collected attention. Now in a few moments you will hear a bell ringing. So you are invited to open your eyes again and connect back to this session, to this interview. And well, Menina, would you like to share a little bit your experience that you just had? <laughs> yeah, it was a short moment. And, but at the same time, it felt long. Um, it is super, it's super bright here, so uh, it's, it was definitely helpful to kind of get relaxed on my eyes a little bit. And it's, it's, it's crazy how many thoughts kind of come in and then get taken away through the breathing. Um, yeah, how is it possible that actually now with doing nothing, I mean, sitting here, <laughs> just closing your eyes doesn't really mean that you're doing anything so how how does it how does doing nothing really help us concentrate better yeah it helps us to concentrate and it helps us also to bring um, impact in our surroundings even and this by doing nothing and well let me try to explain because it's a tricky question that you are doing to me and, and also um, i would like to hear real life yeah. examples from how yeah, we of course how we implement our impact, how this impacts others, like when we are yeah. more concentrated. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will go for it. And so it is not really obvious at the first uh, moment, as you just said, but the idea behind that is simple. If we get to know ourselves better, we can also understand others better. And if we understand others better with that knowledge, we can help, help them to thrive. So you might ask now, but don't we know ourselves already? And I would say, well, perhaps not sufficiently, because if we are really mindful about ourselves, we can get into touch with our emotions, our tendencies to react. We can observe our own impulsiveness. And um, if we do that, uh, there's something interesting happen happening that we know from neuroscience. What is happening is that we raise our emotional self-awareness, and this happens in a part of the brain called insula. While empathy, um, which means connecting with other people, is taking place in the same part of the brain, in the insula. So this means that when we train our emotional awareness, our self-awareness, simultaneously, we are cultivating empathy. So we can connect better with others. It is like going to the supermarket and you get these offers like two for the price uh, of one, it's exactly that. So training your emotional awareness makes you more, more empathetic. So here we have the connection between the intrapersonal sphere and the interpersonal sphere. And I said as I said before, when we know ourselves better, we can understand others better. And here you, you can see that connection. And um, in that way, we can help the other people to, to thrive. So you have been asking for a real life example. Yep. And uh, let me try to, to explain it. Um, I will tell you a story. Um, once upon a time, no, actually it was not so long ago. It was just a couple of years ago. Um, another manager, Anna and me, we have been doing the annual review of a team member, an analyst. And well, we asked him something unusual. We asked him, if you still got paid, but you could do whatever you want, um, 
what would you be doing and um, just choose something that you are good in and you like to do. So he looked at us and he said, well, I like to invent board games. And well, this was a valid answer, but we could not yet link this passion of him to what he actually can do in the workplace. So we had to bring it one step further and we asked him um, something else. We asked him, and why do you like to invent board games? And he said, well, I like to be creative, invent stuff and show it to my friends in order to get their recognition. And we said, okay, that sounds great. And when do you think you can do exactly that? Being creative, getting recognition in your workplace. And some sec seconds of thought and he answered, well, I can do that when I teach SAP UI5 programming skills to trainees. Mm -hmm. So there was the answer that really could, could help us. Because mm -hmm. um, we found something to link his emotional driver and his intrinsic motivation to, to something that he actually can do at work. So later that week, we assigned him two trainees. So he engaged with the task and he began to, to teach them SAP UI 5 programming skills. And he deployed the best version of him within an area that he considered was his area. He felt empowered and he was engaged. And we, as his supervisors, um, we could have the trust that his performance would come on its own. Why would it come on its own? Because he was within his flow. Within his flow means that his skill set matched exactly um, with the task at hand. So we could trust that he would really thrive and that he would um, perform extraordinarily. And that was actually the case. Later that year, he was promoted to, to team leader. So let me go through it in slow motion again because I want to link it to what I said earlier. When we raise self-awareness, we can empathize better with other people. So the manager, the other manager, Anna and I, we could empathize better with that person and getting to know what really moves that person from the inside, which was his emotional driver. And our openness towards that person allowed that person also to open up to and to deep dive within him and look what his intrinsic motivation was. And well, with that information, we could do some job crafting. We could reassign some trainees from here to there. And um, then he, he could have like the, the, the place where he could, or the space where he could deploy his best version. And this is not all what happened. The two trainees we assigned to him were more than happy to work with him because they felt very good um, working with someone who was within his flow. And as conclusion, perhaps, or getting to a close, emotions exist and can thus not be taken out of the workplace. So the invitation should be to benefit from them in, in the best way possible and to, um, to ask ourselves in which way do, the best, do they do the best job for us and help us to find our best version in which we perform in the best way, in an excellent way, and at the same time, we feel good about that. So sustainable thriving is possible if we get to know ourselves better, if we self-lead us better, if we empathize better, and in that way afterwards can lead others with excellence. Thank you, Dominic, for shedding some light into what mindfulness is and emotional intelligence, giving also that real life example uh, and um, also having that practice now um, uh, with the meditation. Um, do you want to sum it up just in, in one sentence what we just learned, the most important takeaway maybe? Yeah, I think the most important takeaway would be that um, get into touch with the deepest essence of the human and he or she will thrive. Really that nice. would be my takeaway for Thank you, Dominic. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Menina. Thank you, Max. Yeah, that was Dominic uh, with his insights about mindfulness and uh, having a practice. I think it was really cool to calm down here a little bit on stage. Um, Dominic is actually also on social media and, and um, the community. Uh, so if you go to community.sap.com, you'll find him as well. The same like Max showed how to find Nabit. 
Um, but we also have, and you, you want to say something? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't prepared that we are supposed to do exercises on the stage here. That was a surprise for you, Max. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how freaking good was that with Dominic? I, I'm Usually the, the first one when I'm convinced to do exercises to start laughing about it or something like that. But sitting here on the stage doing this mindfulness things was <laughs> stunning. I mean, yeah. I definitely needed it. Um, okay. we, we rushed through the last three hours, four hours with lots of content. Yeah. And that's been really, really outstanding. I, I mean, Dominic uh, told me before he was planning to do something like this. And I think he planned with two minutes, something. But it really felt longer than that. And that's, that's how time is so different. I mean, on really one bad. side, it's, it's, it's so long. Um, but on the other side, it feels like a very short time. Um, but speaking okay. of such a practice, if you, if you want to practice more of that and you feel like, hey, that's actually like a nice break to have in between. We do have um, virtual mindfulness sessions here at SAP TechEd um, offered for you by um, the SAP team that is running, running those also inside SAP. I am Max, do we want to maybe show on the community this real quick or not? I think it's better to just, just talk say in a nutshell. It. Say it. Okay. And there's a whole section in the SAP community okay. about emotional intelligence, yeah, right? It's a so topic page. So if you go to the homepage of community.sap.com, then that's where you find the topics. And if you go to mindfulness, then that's where you um, will find more about it by the community and also um, the blog post where the virtual mindfulness dates and times are during SAP TechEd. Absolutely. With that, I think it's time for me to give it over to Baff and Crack after we had a short look into the highlights of what I've or we've just experienced on the stage from the developer keynote to uh, mindfulness sessions with Dominic. Yeah. I'm utterly excited to welcome you to the Developer Lab. I don't want to waste any further more time. It is a developer keynote that is waiting for you, made by developers for developers. So I think it's an awesome fit. Perfect, no? Yeah, absolutely right. Three developers with a very diverse skill set. Who spilled that coffee and was that real or fake? We're looking forward to hearing from them, right? Yes, absolutely. All developers, welcome. We have this queue called ABAP queue pointing to the ABAP side and deserializing my ABAP queue subscriptions. So this ABAP, ABAP web hooks up. Thanks team, and I'll see you later. Uh, I think it was super impressive, but what's your take? I'm super excited to do that. Hope your sweaty hands are not stopping you. Oh. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's our social media wall, and it's so much happening on social media already. So thank you for tagging us. I'm thrilled that you guys are sharing your thoughts uh, with us, your feelings, your experience with SAP Ticket so far. The next journey that I want to take you guys with me is going down under, where I'm thrilled and honored to have one of our SAP champions, Phil Cooley, joining me here in the live studio. Hi, Lena. How are you going? How do you like my developer lab? Uh, very, very cool. Very slick. Yes, I like it a lot. Our expert talk. Expert panel. It's not expert talk. Sorry to correct you here, Lena. With that, let's welcome our guests. That's all live. Hey, folks. I hope you're doing fine. You're all looking great wherever you are in the world. We have quite some time zones covered. I know it's hard for everybody of us, but so glad to see you.